This video is a tutorial sheet on normal forms for underdamped second order systems. Again a reminder that we're going to assume you're familiar with the content of the videos in this series on second order responses and this video provides tutorial questions you can use to test your understanding. In order for this to be effective you need to first read the questions and then pause the video while you attempt your answer. You should only look at the solutions provided once you've made a proper attempt. Now some background. We're looking at second order systems. Um, here you can see a typical second order differential equation. But in particular, we're assuming it's underdamped so that the characteristic equation has complex roots and therefore we're looking at these normal forms where you write the coefficients as 2 zeta omega n and omega n squared. And down here we have the equivalent transfer function. So the first question. By finding the damping ratio and the natural frequency, put the following into normal form. And now's the time to pause and try this while I go through the solutions. So you're given at the top here a reminder of what the normal form looks like. First you take out the coefficient of the x double dot to make sure that everything is monic, makes life easier. And then you find the last coefficient is omega n squared and the middle coefficient is 2 zeta omega n. So in terms of what we've got for this first one, I can write down straight away omega n squared equals 6 and 2 zeta omega n equals 2. And therefore zeta equals 1 over root 6. Obviously omega n equals root 6. What about the next one? Well, in order to make it um, monic, I'm going to take the 5 outside and write this as x double dot plus x dot plus 2x equals 15. And now I can see straight away omega n squared equals 2 and 2 zeta omega n equals 1. And so therefore zeta equals 1 over 2 root 2. And with this final one, again you'll see I need to rearrange it a bit, so take the 0 0.2 outside and I get x double dot plus 2x dot plus 12x equals 4.8. So now again I can see straight away that omega n squared equals 12 and 2 zeta omega n equals 2, which gives me that zeta equals 1 over root 12. Question 2. Find the damping ratio, the natural frequency and the damped frequency of oscillation for the following two. And again, now is the time to pause before I go through the solutions. So first one then. Now we've reminded you of what this normal form is here and we've also reminded you that you can write this in this form here where omega d is the damped natural frequency. So we're interested in zeta, omega n and omega d. So for this first one, by inspection, omega n squared equals 0 0.9 and 2 zeta omega n equals 0 0.6 which tells you that zeta equals 0 0.3 over the root of 0 0.9. I'm not going to bother putting that in my calculator. And now I can also do that omega d equals root 0 0.9, that's omega n, into the root of 1 minus zeta squared, which is 1 minus 0 0.3 squared over 0 0.9. Now I can take the other 0 0.9 into the square root, so I get the square root of 0 0.9 minus 0 0.3 squared. Sorry. Um, that's it, because the 0 0.9 in the denominator has cancelled, and you'll see this gives you the root of 0 0.81, which is in fact just 0 0.9 again. Next one, 17 of s, s squared plus 14s plus 85. So again, we can go straight to the solution, omega n squared equals 85, or omega n equals root 85. 2 zeta omega n equals 14. 
which gives you that zeta equals 7 over the root of 85. Again, don't bother putting it in your calculator. Just leave it like that because it's exact and it's neat. And then if I want omega d, I could write omega d equals root 85 into the square root of 1 minus 49 over 85, which gives me the square root of 85 minus 49, which is the square root of 36, which is 6. Next question. Which of the following has the fastest sampling time? Okay, so we're looking at the real part of the roots here and saying which of these decays the fastest. Now's the time to pause and I'm going to the solution. So the first thing to notice is they all have the same, okay, so I'm going to put here the same omega n squared. And therefore, we can look at damping in order to get an idea about which one is fastest. Now, omega n squared is 12.25, which gives you that omega n equals 3.5. So if we do each of these in turn, we see we've got 2 zeta omega n equals 8, which implies that zeta equals 8 over 7. Or we've got 2 zeta omega n equals 12, which implies that zeta equals 12 over 7. Or we've got 2 zeta omega n equals 4, which gives you zeta equals 4 over 7. And finally, 2 zeta omega n equals 2, which gives you zeta equals 2 over 7. Now, what can we say? We were looking at speed of response. Um, and we wanted to know which one was fastest. So this one is very underdamped. Okay. This one's slightly underdamped. This one's overdamped. And this one is nearly critical damping. You remember critical damping has a zeta of 1. So the fastest is going to be this one here. Question 4. Characterize the following based on the level of damping. So what sort of behaviors are you expecting from these systems? Now's the time to pause and we go to the solution. So I'm going to write down the characteristic roots and not necessarily go straight to the uh, normal forms yet. For this one, the characteristic roots, roots are clearly minus 9 and minus 1. It's very overdamped. And <coughs> that's the key characteristic, very overdamped. The behavior will be dominated by this minus 1. What about this next one? You've got roots at minus 3, plus or minus j and then what's left is going to be root 8. I think was it sorry is it plus or minus just j8? Get that right. Just plus or minus j8. Okay so I'll go back to that one in a minute once I finish the others. Clearly that one's quite a lot underdamped. I can I can write that here. So this is clearly underdamped not marginally but quite a bit because the 8's much bigger than the 3. This one here has got roots at minus 2 and minus 6, so it's slightly over damped. You can see two real roots, not too far apart, but they could be closer. What about this next one? You'll see the roots are going to be minus 10 plus or minus j root 300. And for the one down at the bottom, I've not got much space, it's going to be minus 6 plus or minus j1. So for this one, it's almost critical damping. I can see that without calculating the zeta exactly because I've got a minus 6 for the real part and a j1 for the imaginary part. I've got two underdamped ones, these two here. 
Um, and what I could do if I wanted to find out which was the most underdamped is I could then say, all right, let's work out exactly what zeta is. So for this one, omega gren squared equals 400. And so therefore you're going to get zeta equals 20 over 2 times 20, which is a half. So that's quite a lot underdamped, a half. And for this one above, I've got omega n squared equals 73, which gives me zeta equals 6 over 2 root 73, which is 0 0.23. And so you'll find that this second one was the most underdamped of the two underdamped processes. So we've given some tutorial questions, getting you to think about normal forms and what they tell you about the behavior.